Okay, so welcome back to this third video on the sarco endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. Right, so we've seen how uh, the circa protein has now gone into this E2 conformation where the, um, the, uh, well, where the ion binding sites are closer to the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum than to the uh, cytosol. So um, it's still got the phosphate group attached, and what's now going to happen is in the E2 conformation, it prefers to have protons bound to it than calcium. So the calciums are going to come off and the protons are going to come in. So the calciums are going to go off into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and the protons are now going to bind in here. Okay, so uh, next phase is here. Right, so we'll draw it in here. So here's the membrane again, here's the protein. And now it's still in the E2 uh, conformation and it's still got the phosphate group bound to it, but now it's got uh, free protons bound in here. And again, the protons don't get named in the name of this, uh, this stage of the process. So now this stage is known as just E2P. So it's in the E2 conformation, uh, and it's got a phosphate group attached to it, but the free protons don't get named. So uh, the fact that it's got protons, <laughs> whoever came up with this naming system didn't care. Right, so now uh, what happens is that the phosphate group falls off. Once the protons bind, the phosphate group falls off. So uh, what happens is that you go temporarily into this, into this state. So where you are still in the E2 state, i.e. the ions are held closer to the endoplasmic reticulum lumen than to the cytosol, but there is no longer a phosphate group bound there, and that's just known as the E2 state now. So again, the protons aren't mentioned. Okay, and then what happens is that now the phosphate group's fallen off, it doesn't, it doesn't want to be in the E2 conformation anymore, it's going to return back to the E1 conformation, because it was the phosphate group that forced it into the E2 conformation in the first place. So once the phosphate group on that aspartate residue falls off, then um, the, it, it returns back to its original conformation, and it drags those protons back up to face the cytosolic, and... Uh, um, cytosol, and now what happens is that the protons' uh, affinity for binding there is lower than calcium, so calcium is going to come and displace it, and the whole cycle will repeat again. And that is how the circa swaps um, free protons being moved out of the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum for the movement of two calcium ions into that endoplasmic reticulum, and it's coupled to the hydrolysis of ATP into uh, ADP here, and then the phosphate group's going to come off, so the phosphate group's here, maybe. Okay, uh, so that's how circa functions, and it leads to having a very high calcium concentration in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which can basically be unleashed in order to cause uh, a calcium signaling cascade.